Hey guys, and welcome back to the Mean Bean Machine commentary. Who the fuck is this guy? I don't know who he is or what show he might, what episode he might have shown up in first, but I know he's the one. He's the, like the first character in the game that started to re to really regularly beat me. Yeah, oh yeah, well, but the, the music the... starts off faster, so I guess this is where shit gets real. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that and he has this really, like, hard metal theme going on when, when he shows up to talk to you and say his blurb thing. It's also the longest part we have, so... Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's most, it's mostly because at this point I start fighting back a lot more, where I have to... where I get pushed up by the uh, garbage rocks and I have to start fighting back, so... Mm. so I haven't actually... Longer. I haven't actually played through the game in years... To be honest, like I got the achievement for beating Robotnik in uh, in the um, Genesis Collection, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, but I didn't actually play through the game. I just looked up a password on the internet and skipped straight to Robotnik, <laughs> and then lost to him, and lost to him, and then lost to him again, and then kept losing to him until I won, which still took less time than playing through the entire game. Well, yeah, yeah. because you'd probably be losing to the other uh, to the other robots um, before. Um, you got to him, but okay, I have a question since I didn't watch an awful lot of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Are all of the robots robots that are in the show? Yes. Um, Does, yes, but the only ones that actually matter are Coconuts, Grounder, and Scratch. Yeah, all, all of these yeah. robots come from at some some point in the show. What the hell oh. is he doing? <laughs> oh. Uh, it's yeah. like I like I like that his raccoon tail ha ha wags its tail when he's happy, <laughs> but what what's going on with his face? Davy he, he Crockett's just... a lot weirder than I remember him. He he, he just Davey wants Crockett, to be Super Mario, you know? Oh, that's his name, Davy Sprocket. Yeah, he he just wants to be Super Mario. I'm surprised you remember that, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they do list every all the names of the robots in the credits. So. Also, God, yeah. These, oh. these these expressions are just what the hell. What is that little creature next to the score? Oh, that is uh, your protagonist. What? That's that is um actually no, it's not the protagonist, but it's yeah, a certain it is. kind of it's a certain kind of bean that uh, cheers you on. Um, uh, it's adorable. Actually, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, they nope. they don't actually name a protagonist either in the manual or in game. No, you they, are the they, protagonist. Yeah, th th that bean, like that, is actually a mutated bean that uh was a victim of Robotnik's machine thing. Uh, he actually does have a name. It's called Hasbean. Uh, yes, uh, Hasbean is what it's called. Yeah, he deserves to die. Stop playing, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible, terrible one. <laughs> That it's no, it, it's actually what his name is. It's in the yeah, credits. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's his. I know it's what his name is. Still, a he terrible also has time. severe <laughs> bouts of narcolepsy. I, 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 I it's. I'm kind of surprised that this isn't Ted's most favorite game because all the fucking puns that are in this. So. No, no. Here, here's the thing. Puns aren't funny because they're puns. Puns are funny because of the re reactions everybody else has to puns. Yeah. Exactly, and then look at the reactions everyone's been having to Hasbeans. <laughs> no, they, they're only funny if I get to be the one who causes the reaction, you see? <laughs> <laughs> they're funny because you're a troll. Exactly. What the fuck is that expression? That expression is all of his pieces falling, like, shooting out of his face. That does not look like all his pieces are shooting out of his face. Also, hi, Patrick. Well, that's what hap That's what's happening if you look close at it. It's kind of a thing that that's given, that's uh, that's hurt a little by the fact that uh, that you know, 16-bit sprites kind of pixelated, hard to tell minute details. But yeah, all of his pieces just shot out of his face. It's like the easiest character design ever. Let's just give a kidney bean wheels. The kids will love it. He, he really so does like not Patrick. look like he gives a shit right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's like Patrick if he if he had been given a dosage of Squidward, pretty much. He has a, well, he has a pig nose. Doesn't does this uh, precede uh, SpongeBob SquarePants? Yeah, it does yes. now. SpongeBob was 1999. Yep. Mm. yep. I remember the first was like 1995 or something like that. Yeah, I remember the first uh, commercials for SpongeBob being a new show. It was like one of the first new shows I really watched as a kid. So, like yeah. I was six when it came out. So. <laughs> but by the time I really like got into Sonic in a more nerdy fashion, I guess, is when I found out about the cartoons, and that was back in 2008, 2009, where I was just like, oh my god, Sonic, oh my god, Sonic. Uh, 
because that was at the time I was getting introdu I was introduced to Modern Sonic, and that's when I really started nerding out to the Hedgehog. So, yeah, uh, I, I played Sonic uh, two and uh, one so many times in the early nineties. Uh, I, I I geeked out when I saw like trailers for like Sad AM or uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. So I, I followed those pretty well, not Sad AM too much, but Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog definitely. Which is why I have more of a preference for that show compared to the latter. You <laughs> wait, you I, you actually like Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog more than Sad AM? It's it, a part of it is because I've watched a a uh, AOSTH a lot more than Sad AM, and. Quite honestly, I just don't think Sad AM is that good of a TV show. Well, okay, like, I, I, I watched, like, when I was really young, like, when there there was still a blockbuster around, so, so this was probably, like, 2001, 2002, um, like, I had rented, uh, uh, a, I rented a, a, a Sad AM VHS with, like, three episodes on it, an awful lot, and I remember one of those was the one with the robotic, uh, Sally, where he, uh, where he, that's not the funny kiss, uh, one. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, yeah like uh, going back to it, like I have no connection, no real connection otherwise to either show, but like not that S uh, Sad AM is a bad show. It's just, I don't particularly see where it's like one of the best cartoons ever. Uh, like a lot of other people seem to say. Well, compared to other video game adaptations. Oh, well, like that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing about Sad AM is that it's it's more serious than the others, which really makes it stand out. Like, I mean, yeah, there were bits of humor in there every now and then, but for the most part, it was a lot ser more serious. And the badniks were not even really badniks; they were SWAT pots. So it 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 did it did what it did pretty well, but at, at the same time, it it's not as it, it's it's definitely no Avatar: The Last Airbender. It's a lot more ep episodic. There isn't really a straight narrative through the thing, so when you get to an episode that, like, the season two finale, where you have this big game-changing story arc thing going on, it's not quite as effective as, say, in the comics, where you have Endgame or, uh, or the uh, se season finale in a, in a show that has a season-long story arc going on. Yeah, and then and then Sad AM does things like just throwing Dulcie into the mix out of nowhere because it's a character in the comics that had just debuted. And funnily enough, the comics also threw Dulcie in out of nowhere. But the comics were at that point uh, pretty much still still torn between trying to be humorous and trying to be serious. So they didn't really know what they were doing at that point. But uh, but. It, it works better there because the episode that Dulcie shows up in is one of the humorous ones that plays, like, very early Archie. Yeah. Uh, hi, Grounder. Uh, for some reason, uh, I just realized this, too. Uh, Grounder actually has a different color scheme, I believe, in this game compared to the actual show. It said his name was Sam in the, in the, in the little... What's it called? Well, no, no, he was just grounder because it, it was it, he. He introduced himself as a grounder, but he said he, you can call me Sam because I'm a I'm a surface to air missile Puyo pop player, and I'm gonna have <laughs> you, and I'm gonna have you for launch. I the the lines that they spout at you at the beginning of every level are kind of like pro wrestler lines. <laughs> yep. I'm going to take you in the Puyo Pop ring this Sunday on Monday night. Uh, mean Bean Mission. Why is every, Why is everyone leaving? Mean bean, mean bean, mean bean. <laughs> oh my gosh, this this game actually uses the ones digit for score. That's like the only other game I can think of that does that is Monkey Ball. Oh, wow. uh, the one the ones digit goes up as you move beans around. So basically, if you want to get a lot of extra points, zigzag around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing is I never really notice the score because I'm too busy not dying at this game. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of like spinball in that respect. It has a goal, and you're trying to, you're trying to get, to, you're trying to beat the uh, guy on the other side of the screen, as opposed to just getting a score, like in say columns. Uh, uh, is there a, just a straight up marathon mode in this game where you can just keep on going until you lose, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is one. It's um. I forget what it's called on the menu screen, but it's there, and I spent a lot of time on it during that dark age I mentioned, where I only had a second player controller port to work with. Ugh, uh, God, I remember those days. They were so torturous. Yeah, I do believe this is also the final stage before things really pick up, and the game's like, alright, 
No bullshitting you now. Fuck you. Let's do this shit. Nah. Uh, uh, dear Lord, Robotnik is nearly impossible. Yeah, it's not nearly long long impossible. We see him. Well, you know how fast the beans go down when you're actually holding down? That is basically the normal speed at that point. Now, something that's important to know for not dying in a mean bean machine is that the block you, is that the space at the top of, of the puzzle that you don't want to block is the third from the left, which is the block that your that your yeah. beans spawn in from, assuming that you're not holding left or right as they're coming down because if you do that they might they might actually move a space to the left or right before they uh before they pass the top edge of the box was that, that intentional combo. donnie <laughs> uh yes and no because i kind of did set up in a way but at the same time i didn't expect to actually get a four combo but i thought it'd be like a three combo <laughs> So. Yes and yes and no is the answer to is that intentional in everything that you <laughs> yeah. successfully pull off in this game. <laughs> Unless you have a really big ego, then it's always yes. Oh, this guy looks <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> ah, this boss I actually remember. I don't remember his name, but something about his design stuck out to me as as, as strangely cool. Like not not good not the good kind of cool, the kind of cool that sticks out like a sore thumb against everything else in the game. He has no fingers, like they just decide, <laughs> fuck it, we we are out of time. I do not have the time to draw five digits. Yeah. Well, you know, I that think... was a th that's kind of a thing in the animated series too, like like they just go fuck it with all of the stuff that they do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think his name is Sir Fudgy Lo Fuzzy Logic, I believe it is. Um, it, I sounds like a deep, it sounds like a Mixmaster DJ sort of name. Uh, Sir Fuzz Fuzzy Logic, which is uh, a really trying way too hard pun on Sir Fuzzalot or something. This whole game is a pun. <laughs> like, like, there is not a single sentence that is said that does not contain a pun. Which game have you played more of, Donnie? Meme Beam Machine or Spinball? Uh, I play. I tend to play Mean Beam uh, Spinball more because Mean Beam Machine requires a lot more concentration, and I suck at it more. Whereas with Spinball, I have a lot. I have a lot more fun playing it because I I'm a bigger spin, uh, pinball fan and, than this. So. Well, I even if uh, even if pinball is an inherently imprecise thing, there's still a lot more room for skill over luck in Spinball than here. Yeah. It's more so luck in this game than spinball because you have no idea what beans you're gonna get. And first in the spinball where you have everything laid out in front of you and you just have to get through it. So, hmm. I'm pretty sure that there is some sort of formula to what uh to what uh, beans you get coming down, uh, as opposed to it just being completely and utterly random. Like I I think they'll give you stuff uh, more often that you can use. Um, based on what based on what exists in the puzzle box. Well, with that said, the fact that there's like what five or so colors and that they can all be uh, paired together in a bunch of different combinations makes there there's a lot more variables. Like you can't you, there's a lot less chance of you getting the exact set of beans you need as opposed to Tetris when there's only seven or eight or so. I forget how many exactly there are uh, blocks that you could get at any point. As opposed to here, there's like probably like twenty to thirty different combinations. So, yeah. so it does make luck a bigger factor, I think. Mm -hmm. It figures too.